you have a service region, you pick up the car, you can drive it anywhere you want, but you have to drop it off within the service region. And you pay by the mile or up to a fixed fee, and that sort of business model is up to the uh, end our customer in the end of the day how they want to charge for it. So you can actually leave your car on a parking meter and it's not included in your costs. So when you finish your rental, you can leave it there. And at the end of the day, they run a report and say, well, the car's been parked here so much for so long. And then they actually pay the local government for that parking fee. So it's all built in. Well, I, I think just in any, any space for any car sharing company is dealing with the local regulations of parking. San Francisco's got street cleaning every other day. You don't want your cars towed away. That is going to impact things. Uh, then there's the whole business of things. It's, it's uh, competing with the Uber and the Lyfts, who right now are heavily subsidizing a lot of their journeys. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when they go IPO and they start to realize, oh, we've got to start making money now. Uh, I think that's going to impact things as well. In the autonomous space, we're taking a fairly unique approach, different from all the big names that everybody reads about. Uh, we're looking at more on the, on the low-speed use cases, uh, where there might not necessarily be passengers in there. And, then, and bringing this into the car sharing space, you can think about uh, one of the challenges you have in car sharing is that your fleet remains what we call on balance. So you've got cars in one part of the city, but the demand might be in others. And typically that's a manual process, send people out, go move the vehicles around. Well, sometimes you can try and incentivize people, but what we can envisage if you can get the cost down in office, you could put a, make these vehicles semi-autonomous in the middle of the night when traffic's slow and low speed, you can uh, rebalance the fleet. Or you could, in fact, even just have the case where, all right, I want a vehicle, and it, instead of having to walk up to it, it comes and drives to you itself. You know, being able to schedule your rentals for particular use cases, you can do residential car share, there's corporate car sharing coming in, there's making more efficient use of corporate fleets, uh, creating business models for corporate users to use them. You know, the whole goal is all around, can we make more efficient use of vehicles with 95% of them sitting idle, sitting idle for 95% of the time there. Uh, and, and then in the cities, you know, a lot less people wanting to actually own cars. And then the next big thing is all the micromobility coming in. And, you know, our platform can handle scooters and e-bikes and all these things just as easily because they're not a whole lot different from a car at the end of the day. You've still got to book them and keep track of them.